How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video. So in today's video we're going to be setting up our Nintendo Switch with this RetroArch pack that I have made. And I am going to be pretty vague on how I talk about this pack because I don't want this video to get taken down. But I'll have a link in the description of my previous video. I'll probably put a picture somewhere on the screen about it. And if you watch that video I explain a little bit of what this video is supposed to be about. So I'm sorry about that. But I'm just trying to not get this video taken down and help you out at the same time. So I'll be explaining as best as I can. And of course, if there's any type of confusion, I'll have the links to my social media sites. And that way you can message me privately and I can answer any questions if you have any. So with that being said, let's just go ahead and check it out. All right, so the first thing that we could do is download this one zip file for today. So if you look in the description down below, there's going to be several links, but one of them should say download the RetroArch pack here or something like that. But once you click on that link, it should take you to the page where you can start the download process. And then after that, you can move it to the desktop like I have done already. Now, the next thing we could do is open up the SD card. And it doesn't matter how you open up your SD card as long as you're able to transfer your files successfully. I highly recommend using the SD card tools in Hecate. That's what I'm using in this video and I can access my SD card directly from the switch and it's very reliable, never have any issues with it, but it's up to you. Just once you have the SD card open, you also need to have your SD card already set up with CFW. So if you don't have that already set up, I'll have a link in the description to a video that will help you uh, get set up with that. And then you can follow along with this video after. Now that we have the SD card open, we can go ahead and extract this one zip file. So again, uh, something that I recommend with extracting files is seven zip. It's free and I never have any issues with it. So if you want to follow along with me, I'll leave a download link in the description as well. But once you have seven zip or whatever you want to use, I'm going to right click on this zip file. And with seven zip, I'm going to open up this tab here, click open archive. And all we need to do here is have our SD card ready for transfer and highlight all these files and folders and then extract them to the root of the SD card. This is going to be the beginning of the SD card without being inside any folders or files and somewhere in the empty space down here. That way you don't accidentally drop them into any folders. So this file is about, I think, three gigabytes, I think. And that's because that's just how big the retro arc is but we'll let this uh, extract over and then we'll continue after okay so after the files have extracted to the sd card we should now be able to run retro arc on our modded switch but before we go and test that out i just want to explain things with the files that we added just to get a little bit more detail so with the retro arc folder this has all the files needed in order to run retro arc and is already set up to run with what we're trying to do like on my previous video on top of that, I've added a whole lot more extra support to do more things. So the reason why I'm saying this is because after this video, I'm going to do another follow up video with RetroArch in general and so that you can add a whole lot more um, titles and you can play different types of cores, which I'll explain in more detail on the next video. But just wanted to let you know that that this is set up with extra files and if you already know RetroArch this is the latest version of RetroArch 1.19 I believe and I always put the core folders inside downloads so if you know anything about RetroArch you can add all your folders here with your types of um, titles different games and for different cores but for now with this pack I only have the folder that is FB Alpha for reasons that what we're trying to do and that's pretty much it the next thing that we have is this forwarders folder and without getting into much detail it's so that way you can have the pictures on the home menu so hopefully you understand that but of course if you don't you can leave a comment down below or find me on any one of my social media sites and we can message privately that is the main thing inside the switch folder has the NRO to run RetroArch and that's pretty much it. So with that explanation out the way, we can now eject out of the SD card and test it out. So I'm going to go back into my CFW and I'll meet you when I'm on the switch home menu. 
Okay, so here at the switch home menu, this part is the part that I cannot talk about. I don't know why it's such a big deal. It's just adding a folder onto the home menu, but I can't talk about it or else it might get taken down. So what I am going to try to explain is that in order to have these pictures on your home menu, you need to use any type of folder like maybe DBI installer or the my app or tinfoil. And then you would locate that forwarders folder and inside there, that's what you would use in order to get the pictures on the home screen. So I don't have the Punisher here. I, that's what I'm going to, um, I'm going to go ahead and do that just so that way I can, t uh, kind of give it an idea of what it would look like after because I don't have Punisher yet. But once I'm done, I'll show you on my home menu. Okay. So after doing exactly what I just said, or tried to tell you, now I have the Punisher on my home menu. And if you have all of these images on your home menu, you should be able to just enter any one of them and start the game. But if you do not want to have all of these images on your home menu, you can just run RetroArch manually and enter them from there, which I am going to show. But uh, just to let you know that inside that forwarders folder has this RetroArch um, folder as well. You can just have this and enter RetroArch and it would be good to have in case if you have any extra titles or different types of cores being used, you can enter RetroArch from here because RetroArch needs to be run in HB menu without applet mode. So you would need a folder like this, or you would need to run a HB menu with a without applet mode in case this is what it looks like. So above my head, there's no applet mode in red letters. And here is where you would run RetroArch. So I just want to quickly explain that in case you want to run this without any of these folders. So before I enter RetroArch manually, let me just show you that it does work for me and enter any one of these titles should be just fine. So there you go. And on my previous video, I did have the FPS counter activated on the top right hand corner, but I didn't know if a lot of y'all would like that because it does pop up pretty big on the screen. So I disabled it for this pack here. But after that, we are good to go. Okay, so for those of you that might not want to have these titles on your home screen, or if you have any other types of uh, titles in RetroArch that you may have added, you can access RetroArch manually, either with this forwarder or with the HP menu without Apple mode. But entering RetroArch manually, this is what it's going to look like. You're going to have the main menu with all the types of settings that you can uh, change in RetroArch. But if you're just here for this uh, pack for my previous video, and then you don't need to change anything else, but just go into load content, go into downloads, and then go into this FB Alpha folder, and then enter the files that you may see in there. So I'm sorry, but I can't go into much detail on this video. But on the follow up video, I will definitely go into more detail. So if you want to do this manually here and you want to know about it right now, you can leave a comment down below and I can try and explain better there in that way. I don't do it in the video and risk the video getting taken down, but it's pretty simple once you get used to it and all of your other titles that you may want to do with RetroArch, any type of other um, cores or emulators that you want to call them you add them all inside the downloads folder. So if you go into that RetroArch folder inside your SD card, you can go into the downloads folder and you're going to see this FB alpha folder here. Then you can add a Sega Genesis or a SNES or a NES or whatever type of cores that um, you can think of, I guess, and go from there. But I'll be explaining that in a different video. So that's how you would do it manually. I'm sorry. I can't go into much detail on that. But um, it would uh, be the same route. It just takes a little bit longer. But that's pretty much it. I wish I could do a little bit more detail like I usually do with all my other videos. But uh, this is as good as it gets for now. So everything should be working just fine. I am on the latest version of firmware right now, which is 18.1.0 and the latest atmosphere. So uh, I don't see why it wouldn't work on anything lower than 18.1 or um, AMS 1.7.1. But if it doesn't work for you, then maybe you need to upgrade the CFW. 
So like I said, there's a link in the description to that in case you need it. Other than that, everything is working for me fine here. Let me know if it works for you. And of course, if it doesn't work for you, then you can leave a comment down below and I can help you out as best as I can. So with that being said, let me know if it does work for you. And yeah, thank you for everybody that has supported this channel. I really appreciate it. I know I take long to do my videos, but I have a lot of work going on. And then uh, my kids are off for summer, so it's just <laughs> a lot of uh, work on that end as well. But other than that, I really appreciate those that um, take the time to watch my videos and give support to the channel. Those of y'all that leave kind comments and nice feedback, and those of you that have donated as well. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Well, I forgot to say something real quick. Those of you that may be interested in this HB menu as well, you can leave a comment down below and maybe I can help you out with that. But just let you know. With that being said, again, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.